But next, I want to check out Tank's video. So Tank the Tech, for those of you unaware, I'm sure you probably do know Tank. He's got 146,000 subscribers, for Christ's sake. Okay? But um, he did a video talking about Alpha Wolf's rant on merch fees. Uh, so if you guys didn't see it, um, a few days ago, there was a video circulating. It was on Sabian's YouTube channel, but they also uploaded the clip on social media, whatever. But it was Lockie, the singer. He was talking about, uh, you know, the certain... I believe they were in Vancouver, Canada. I believe it was Vancouver. It was somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, if not uh, Vancouver. Um, and they were talking about how they these venues take uh, merch fees. Now, thankfully for me, uh, you know, I've never I've never really toured extensively or anything like that. Or, uh, but I only played, you know, some venues in my area, and there was no merch fees. But I definitely have heard of it. And uh, Tank, who has worked in the music industry as a guitar tech, drum tech, he's you know, roadie. Um, he's providing some insight into um, this situation. Okay, I'm very interested to hear what he has to say. I'm going into this. This is my initial opinion. Um, I'm sure that there is a rationale for why there are these merch fees, but I'm sure there's also ways that you know the the venues could skirt around it and still be profitable. But this is just an easy solution. Uh, but 20% is predatory. That's a predatory amount of money um, when you consider the you know the 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 cost um, and the, like the profit and loss of these uh, merch items. So uh, let's see what Tang has to say. I'm very curious. Here we go. Got a disclaimer here. And yes, you're right, Mia. What's going on, everybody? I'm Tank, and today we're going to be talking about where your money... And I will say, Zab, just real quick, 20%. That was the that was the venue that Alf Wolf was referring to. I'm not saying that's like a standard in the industry or whatever, but that was uh, what they were citing as the fee at that particular venue that they were at. ...is actually going when you buy bands merchandise yeah. at their shows. Yeah. Now, more specifically, we're talking about venue splits or merchandise fees, which is a fee that a band has to pay out after selling their merchandise at the venue that they just played at. Venue splits and merchandise fees are something that's been talked about for years in yeah. the touring music industry. But recently, due to the onstage actions of Australian metal band Alpha Wolf, people are talking about it everywhere, and it's actually made headlines. Not yeah, it got around quick, man. I was I was surprised. Like, I mean, it got around. Lamb Go, Metal Injection, Loud Wire. It went everywhere. Um, I definitely, I, and it's a subject that should be talked about uh, because uh, we could get into it. But it's like to me, it's like uh, these bands. You're you're bringing them in on, on a contractual basis. Um, and you know they're they're the ones that are directly supplying the the revenue through like the bar and if there's food and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I, I'll I'll just shut up and let Tank talk. Just in music related magazines and websites. Yeah. But also on other outlets. Yep. So Alpha Wolf is currently on tour in North America with Era, Thornhill, and Invent Animate. It's true. And on July 30th, they did a show at the Rickshaw Theater in Vancouver, Canada. Okay, it was Vancouver. And during Alpha Wolf's set, their singer goes on a pretty wild rant, clearly yes. in frustration about the venue taking merchandise fees from all of the bands on the tour, not just them. Let's take a look at that really quick. Yeah. Before we got out of here, I want to mention every band on this tour is selling bets over there, over there. We're all trying to get the same shit done. It doesn't matter whose merch you buy, any bit of money you spend helps. Especially when these dirty fucking venues are taking 20% of it from the band's way tonight. Uh, yeah, for the good air conditioner, that's a 30% merch cut. So obviously, their singer, Lucky, not stoked about the whole merch fee situation. And I did watch Sabian's video that he put on his YouTube channel about this, and he also said that at the end of the night when they were like, I think they were either like loading out or they were getting back on their van, they saw the venue promoter who, according to Sabian, said, like, hey, look at me. I'm putting your merch money into my wallet. And if that's true, that guy should get a slap in the face. 
And I have my thoughts on this and this specific situation. But before I go into that stuff, there's actually more to this story that the band posted after that show. Things got a bit weird at the end. Oh, the is he gonna say that it? Promoted the show, wanted his merch. Cut, yeah, yeah. Which look, we never ever agree on merch cut. It's stupid, and we hate it. Buddy, you wanted 20% of all our shit. You know, that's five dollars for every single pair of shorts we sell. That's like twelve dollars for every hoodie we sell. We give to some random guy who doesn't do any work, doesn't count in, doesn't count out, doesn't help us sell, doesn't do anything, but takes free money. So apparently as that happened, he tried to get our sound cut. Like yeah. he tried to cut our set short because he wasn't happy with what was said. Which we don't see the big yeah, problem. Yeah, true, well, Tana, yeah. You know, we're just telling the fans where their money's going. They, they want to take Simon, it Simon, how's it going? They don't want people to know about it. It's super, super shady. It sucks. It's dirty money. Literal, literal dirty money. So, fuck that motherfucker for trying to get our set cut short and trying to take our money. So obvi obviously we still paid the merch cut. It's in the contracts. We've got so that's the part that when I was watching this video, I got confused about because he said we never agree to these uh, and, you know, screw the guy. But then he said we did give him the merch fee. So that that I was a little unsure of. I did That didn't make a lot of sense to me because, like, if it's in the... If, it, if you gave him the merch cut, was it in the contract? Or, you know, so that kind of confused me a little bit. Got to do it to play these venues. It sucks, but it's whatever. Uh, but the guy was a complete jerk about it. Later on in the night, he saw Lockie walking past. Yeah, see, right here. And he said out loud, Oh, look at me. I'm putting your mer merch money in my wallet. What a cock. Just as a total dig at Lockie. Believe it or not, that clip actually answers a lot of questions for me and stuff that I'm going to bring up later in this video. And... I don't know, man. The part about the promoter walking by them and like being like, look, I got your merch money and being an asshole about it. Man, I, it's kind of hard to believe, but this band has no reason to make that up, man. If that yeah. really happened, I mean, fuck that promoter, dude. Like, it's exactly what I said. It's like, if true, and I don't, and I know, I know Sabian a little bit. I don't think he'd lie, obviously, but if that's true, that's fucked. Like he's just trying to get easy money and he's being a dick about it. Yeah. But since this video has been posted and it's been making the rounds on media outlets. The issue is that while the contract may be legally binding, you have to question the morality, not the legality. Can you consent to a deal that is essentially an ultimatum where the opposite side is not playing a gig slash not getting them going hungry? I mean, I, I to me, it's like I I've always kind of thought of it as like, if you sign the contract and you know you you have you know full mind, body, and spirit to observe, read, and comprehend it, you gotta you gotta follow through with the terms, of course. Um, but uh, I guess like to me, like the ultimatum part of it is like, on the, to play devil's advocate is like you didn't necessarily need to play that venue. You know, you could have like uh, mapped the tour in a different direction or gone somewhere else. Like, is it really agreeing to do something if the other option is not eating? Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's a rough um, it's a rough conundrum, man. It really is. It, it's it's there's no great answer. And stuff. A lot of people have been giving their opinions online, and I looked through Twitter and I saw a lot of people that seemed surprised that venues are taking merch cuts. People are saying it's greedy. Cold absence it's is great. Scummy. But for me, would you tour better I bliss? Like, uh, man, unless, I wonder if these people know. I would tour better bliss if the money was really good for it. How common this actually is because it's a fairly common business practice yeah. in the touring music industry. Now, just for the record, I pretty much back well, everything for the follow they said on stage about merch fees. I might yeah. have said it a little differently, but you get the point. <laughs> but these videos aren't about my- Tank would have been like, hey guys, take the tech here. I want to bring attention to this injustice involving the merch cuts. You know, that's what he would have said, because Tank's a very nice guy. My opinions for the most part. This is about talking more about these specific situations that happen on tour. And earlier on in my roadie career, I was actually a merchandise manager for years for a lot of bands. Look at that guy. From small clubs to theaters and festivals and arenas. So for the rest of this video, I want to take that experience okay. that I gained on the road and talk to you guys about these venue splits and merchandise fees and what they're used for, grim. why they came up, and 
why they should probably change in the future. Mm. So to start off here, we're going to talk about what merchandise fees actually are. Okay. And you'll hear a lot of different terminology depending on who you're talking to in the music industry. You can hear venue split, venue cut, merch fee, merch cut, all those different terms. No matter what word they use, it's you getting your money taken. Terms, but it's the same thing. It's the percentage of money that the band has to give to the venue or the promoter after they've sold merch for their show. Now, before I go any further, I just want to stop and mm -hmm. throw this out there. If there's Good. any merchandise managers that are watching or any bands or anything like that, you should only be paying Profit a merchandise fee yeah. off the net total of your merchandise sales, yes. not the gross total. Now, yeah, that would be. I wonder if that. I wonder if that distinction is put into contracts. Because if it's not, I would one hundred percent do the net. Never do the grow. I mean, you that be you would you, that'd be terrible. I mean, you always do the net. The gross total is the actual amount of money that you've collected from selling your merchandise. But then you've got taxes that are going to come out of that that you're going to have to pay. Sometimes you might have a seller's fee for somebody that sold merch. And then you've got to take out other fees in some situations, credit card fees, yeah. square fees, stuff like that. Yeah. After all that's taken out, that is your net total. That is what you're going to pay a merchandise fee on. It doesn't make sense to give somebody else money based on the credit card fees and square fees. Yeah, and that'd, taxes be, that'd be that you really bad. Up paying on all of this. But there are some venues that insist they only work off gross totals, which is bullshit that's yeah. not how this is done that's a okay. venue hoping that a merchandise manager so he says here uh there are some extremely rare cases where a show contract does stipulate that the merch fee is to be paid off of the gross total but it is so rare that it has happened to me less than 10 times and hundreds if not thousands of shows that i've done as a merchandise manager so okay yeah so the, it tends to be a stipulation in the contract that's interesting yeah i would never never if that was a thing, agree to gross. You you would make no money. I mean, you would literally sell a shirt and be like, thanks for the uh, the bag of M&Ms. I mean, that's really how it would go. Manager or a band. I'm uh, not sure how relevant that is. You usually charge sales tax when you're selling an item. That means the tax would be in the gross also. Uh, well, it depends on like, I think the infrastructure. So like, for example, like, uh, like I knew that well, like when I used to be, you know, playing shows, we would sell them. Um, you kind of just sold the shirt as like, it was like, this was the price. And then like the only fees that you really ever ran into, like for us was square. Um, but some of like the more higher end venues, depending on if they have like, uh, like, uh, in my, like just uh, as far as I know is like, if they have like a dedicated person, like working, or if you have, um, a, a merch manager, they may have some systems in place for sales tax, but a lot of times, like for like these lower tier venues and stuff like that, it's usually just like a dude in the corner with like a square hookup to the phone and that kind of thing. And uh, all right, Grim, no problem, man. I'm glad that uh, you were able to hang out. But also this creates an odd one. If, you, if you're on tour, I doubt you're calculating taxes for each new location. That seems hectic. It's not like Vancouver has the same sales tax work. Yeah, exactly. So th I, that's probably falls under the job of like the merch manager. Um, and if like that's applicable, depending on the venue, um, cause like I said, most of the time, most of the shows that I've played, um, it's just kind of just been us in the corner. You sell it for either cash or like you have like the little, like, like we'd have like your phone and like you have like the square hookup and you swipe the card and like you get fees, but never had to like calculate sales tax in there or whatever. And doesn't fully understand how they should be paying out. Mm. I've actually gotten into altercations at venues with people I've been settling with because when I run my numbers, they're like, no, 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 you just give us the money off the gross. And I'm like, no, that's not how this works. So yeah, that would be always awful. Always pay off the net. If you have to pay a merchandise fee, make sure that you're not paying more than you have to. Now, there's a few different ways that merchandise fees can work at venues. Most commonly at club venues and stuff like that, a venue or a promoter just wants a flat percentage across the board from everything that you sold. T-shirts, hoodies, CDs, posters, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The most common percentage you're gonna see is about 20%, but... I think the issue that really arises from a lack of industry standardization, I think some kind of Bansos merch union will be... That's a that's a really great point, Otana. I, there, there should be like some sort of like, like a collective bargaining agreement with... Uh, with venues and um, like like merch, yeah, that 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 should be a thing. Like their own uh, standard practices at venues uh, 
Like you could have like you could imagine that. Like you go on the like on a tour and it's like yeah tonight we're playing a union venue and tonight we're not. That that could be pretty interesting. That's a that's a decent idea. For a band that's touring in a van and trailer, that could be a lot of money, man. If yeah. a band sells a thousand dollars in merchandise that night, that's two hundred bucks. Of it is immediately Go going on. to somebody else. That's money that they could have been using for gas or food or anything yeah. like that. But there are often cases where the merchandise is split up into what we call soft goods and hard goods. Interesting. Now your soft goods are usually. Yeah, I'm gonna, I was going to say I'm going to guess like the soft goods are like yeah. So he has them listed there. I'm going to guess like the hard goods are probably like vinyls and CDs and stuff like that. Usually considered anything that you can wear: a hat, a shirt, a hoodie, sweatpants, shorts. You get the idea. Where hard goods are usually yeah. stuff that can't be worn. It's posters, vinyls, CDs, Interesting. Okay. usually anything media like that. And if that's the case, the merch fee is a little different. The soft goods will usually have a higher fee, around 20% or so. And then the hard goods will have a lower fee, around 10% or something like that. Yeah, bargain. And these are just, you know, things bargain. that change while you're on the road. Every venue and every promoter is different. It all depends on what's been agreed upon beforehand. Now, a lot of people are probably wondering, why does this even exist in the first place? Why do bands have to give a percentage of their merchandise sales to a venue or a promoter? Because I know a lot of people would feel better knowing that 100% of their money went to the band that they were supporting. Now, this stuff has been going on for a very long time, and it usually hmm. originates from the bigger venues that actually have merch sellers for yeah. the bands. So, so that's, yeah, that's kind of what I was like referring to earlier, where there's probably like a, like that, when that happens, they probably then act as like a vendor, which then factors in like the sales tax and all that. And then uh, they probably like, like part of them being employed is those merch fees to then pay them. That's what I'm guessing. So in arenas, when I was touring, a lot of the stuff that I was doing was more accounting, shipping and receiving, making sure all the counts and everything were right. When you get to those bigger venues, they usually have merchandise teams there. Yeah. So you set up everything with them and they take the merch. And then while the show is going on, they have multiple stands where they're selling for you. They've displayed everything. They've brought people in. They're physically selling. Yeah, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, um, he, like when there's like arena shows at like uh, uh, the Patri the New England Patriots, like the stadium, but about two hours away from me. Uh, he goes there and he does that. He's like part of like the crew who sells merch for like, you know, Taylor Swift, for example, like when she plays like these big stadium shows. Everything. And at that point, my job would be to just kind of just keep in contact with them and make sure that they're stocked and they have everything they need. Gotcha. That is usually why there's a merchandise fee. To pay them. those people are going to take the percentage that they sold and pay all their help and make yeah. a little bit of money. Makes sense. That okay, case, that's fair. For me, I'm fine with it. Yeah, that makes sense. Because if the venue is going to do all of that work and, you know, take care of my merchandise. If, if they're going to work, they should be paid for it. Absolutely. All night for the band then yeah, they should be taken care of for that. Yeah. But the problem with that is that over the years, a lot of smaller venues and promoters yeah. have adopted that merch fee. For no goddamn reason. Without providing the actual help to the bands. A lot of these club shows require the band or their merchandise manager to physically set up their merch display. And they yeah. have somebody there that's selling all night. That's why when you go to club shows, you often see the band or somebody from the band. Dude, I remember when we used to play shows, man, like it was so annoying finding a merch person. Like we had to find somebody to just be the merch person while we were on stage. And then we would all just flock to the stand after. But yeah, that was, uh, that was annoying. At their merch table. Most of the time they're not just hanging out. They're actually physically selling the merch yeah. and working. I've been in these situations where the most somebody at a venue has done for me has been like, yeah, there's. Yeah, go sit up over there. That you can go over there, no problem. Right over there. There's a table. Go set up. Yeah. I'll see you at the end of the night to collect the merch fee. They've done nothing all day. I've yeah. done all the work, or the band has done all the work in those situations. Yet they still have to pay out. The problem here is that this has become so common that promoters and venues will now add this into the actual contract that the band's agent is signing for the show. So in this specific instance with Alpha Wolf, while I agree that taking 20% from...
it's gonna go it's gonna go back to what I was saying earlier. If you signed it, I mean I guess the argument is that they rented space. Yeah, I mean so that's that's so that's something that I've done in the past too. I remember like we we, we had an E P release show. I paid money to rent out the venue to host the show. Whereas Whereas maybe in this case, you're like a, a tenant wouldn't be the right word, but like you're, you're, you're in there like performing, but you're not the one actively leasing the space temporarily. From them is really hurting them. That's money that they could use on the road. They unfortunately agreed to it. Or yeah. Their agent did. Their rather. agent. Right. So they don't really have an out from paying that. And you know, it sucks. As they said in that clip where, you have to give your money to some random person at the end of the night that didn't do anything for you. So if a band wants to avoid these fees, really. So if that happened, I wonder if Alf Wolf then got on the phone with their, their, you know, their agent or their booking agent or whatever. Like, hey, what the fuck you do? Hey, why, why'd you do this? If, if they never agreed to him and obviously they had to, uh, I wonder what that conversation was like. Really, at this point, the only thing that they can do is get their agent to take merchandise fees out of their contracts. Yeah. But as I said, this is so common that I don't know if a lot of venues would book these bands without a merchandise fee in there. Yeah. And one of the worst things that's come out of this being so common is that bands are getting booked at these venues that don't have merchandise fees in their contract, but the venues are still going to them at the end of the night and trying Try. to collect. They trying to be little bitches. They're like, hey, uh, Hey, you, you owe us money. And then the band people, you know, not a lot of times aren't the sharpest tools in the drawer. They're probably like, wait a minute. We owe you money. Okay. Anyways, these venues are hoping that the bands are unaware and they think there's a merchandise fee. Yeah. And just yeah. pay them. Well, little scumbags. And I've had situations like that on the road, man. I always made sure when I was working for bands that I got the show contract from our booking agent. Yeah. So I knew that every venue I was going into had a merch fee because a lot of them change night by night, depending on where you're at and who booked it. Probably the so day I've of been the in week situations too. where I knew I didn't have a merch fee that night. And somebody came up to me at the end of the night trying to collect. And I can just pull up that contract and be like, Nope, sorry. I'm Hell not yeah. you anything. And if there's a problem, you can contact our agent. And there's also been situations where they come up saying, hey, you know, I'm here to collect and it's 25%. And I was like, well, my contract says 15%. And sometimes they get aggravated and say, well, that's not how we do it here. And well, that's change. the contract. Like, well, signed contract says 15%. Here's your 15%. If you have a problem with it, contact, contact agent. our agent. Yep. So for all of you bands and merchandise managers out there, always make sure that you have the contracts and know exactly what you need to pay to the venue because sometimes they will try and get more than they're owed. But how do the venues really know what they're owed at the end of the night anyways? We've already covered the venues selling the merchandise for you. And in that specific instance, they're gonna know what the fee is gonna be because they sold it all night. I'm gonna guess if they were smart, I'm gonna guess they probably have some sort of like, you know, like median sales, like average sales, you know, like, you know, you remember back in back in high school, the mean, median and mode, remember the, remember that stuff? They probably have something like that, depending on the slot of the band or something like that. So they probably have a decent idea of how merch sells. Of course, it's different for every band, but that's what I would guess. But um, yeah, I don't know. Is it, is it considered bad form to not pay the merch fees if it's not in the contract? I imagine a lot of venues refuse to book certain bands after they fuck up their own contracts. Um, if it, Not to pay merch fees if it's not in the contract. The way that I operate, man, is like, if it's not in the contract, not doing it. I mean, simple as that. I, I'm not, it's not meant to be like, uh, you know, good faith or anything like that. It is what it is. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm sure some people have definitely do. I mean, that is uh, the venue message. Oh. I got you. Oh, so you mean like, oh, if the venue forgot to, to yeah, I mean, uh, fuck them. That's what I think. I mean, hey, hey, anytime, anytime that there's money coming out of my pocket or money that, you know, I can save because of a loophole, I say fuck them. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I say. 
So at the beginning of a day, you'll do a count in with those venues. Well, you will literally physically lay out every oh, okay. single piece of merchandise you have. They will hand count it. You'll agree on numbers. And then at the end of the night, you'll count out. And whatever that difference is, is the money that was made. Okay. Now, in the situations in like arenas and stadiums and amphitheaters, the venue is liable for that money. So let's say we count out a thousand pieces of merch. Sorry, count in a thousand pieces of merch. At the end of the night, we have 500 left. That means we sold 500 pieces of merch. Mm -hmm. But if they don't have the money to cover that, like if somebody that was working there was doing bad math or they're short, they're still liable for that money. They're paying gotcha. out the yeah. band. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Whatever was on that sheet of paper. Yeah. And a lot of the times it's pretty common that numbers are going to be off. If you're doing an arena tour with a band that's selling hundreds of thousands of dollars of merch, there's a you're lot happening. to get that number on the dot every single night. And then if we go back to the club venues and the theaters where they may not necessarily have somebody doing the merch for you, one of those situations where they just say, there's your table, they still may want to count you in. They'll have somebody from the venue come up and count all your merch with you, but mm, then you go may, sell yeah. everything and you take care of everything. And at the end of the night, they'll count you out and then say, you know, this is what you owe us based on the numbers that were from our accounting. What a pain in the ass. There's also something called spot checking where you will get your own numbers written up for the venue. They'll have somebody come up to you and they'll just randomly check a few like piles of merchandise that you have just to make sure that your numbers are accurate. And then at the end of the night, they'll usually do the same thing. Sometimes if a venue knows you or the venue trusts you or somebody's just being lazy, they might just ask for your numbers. They just say, hey, just give me a sheet with your count-ins and count-outs. I trust you, whatever, and you know, pay yeah. us out at the end of the night. And then there's other situations where venues just don't do any of that. And literally some mystery person will show up at the end of the night and just say, hey, I'm from the venue. I'm here to collect my fee, which is always kind of laughable because it's like, I have to give this money to somebody that I haven't even seen all day, you know? Yeah. But these merchandise- I'm just gonna start doing that at shows. I'm just gonna walk up and be like, hey, I'm here to collect my fee. You know, no, I'm, just kid I'm kidding. I would never do that. But yeah, that's weird. Price fees have always been a thing. And I don't see any of that changing until these bands and agents are just like, we're done with it. Unless you guys, the venues and promoters want to do something for us and sell our merchandise and stuff like that. Yeah. We're earn, not paying out. Earn like, your goddamn money. money. We already have a merchandise manager on the road that's running it or the band members are doing it themselves. It makes no sense to pay out. So as a former merchandise manager and somebody that supports a lot of... Sounds like they just do it because they're just at the mercy of it, which is fucked up. Any Anytime that... The thing is for me, man, is like anytime you're, in, you're forced to do something for just an arbitrary reason, I that stuff really irritates me. Like there's no rationale. It's just, well, that's, that's just the way it is. Like that pisses me off personally. And obviously it pisses everybody else off. The bands... I feel for Alpha Wolf in this situation and the other bands they're touring with and every other band in the world that's in a van and trailer that is scraping yeah. by with their merchandise sales. But as you saw in their own clip, it was built into the contract. I mean, there's no it way to get sucks, out of that. But you can rant on stage. You can bitch about it. You can say, this is unfair. They're taking our money. But if your agent signed off on that contract, there's just no way for you to get out of that. And I would just suggest to everybody and every agent out there to stop building it into these contracts. Yeah. But it's become such a common thing that I don't really see promoters and venues giving up on this kind of thing anytime soon, which is unfortunate. So I guess if I had any final advice for any bands out there or merchandise managers that work for bands, know the situation, have your show contracts in hand, Make sure that you're not paying out more than you need to or that you're paying out when it's not in the contract. Yeah. So hopefully that answered some questions that you may Absolutely have did tank. Fees and why they exist and why bands have to pay them. But with sit down and talk videos like this that I do, sometimes I leave some things out or I forget to talk more about something. So if there are additional questions I think you that covered you have it. or there was something that came up that wasn't answered, feel free to drop a comment, man. I'm happy to talk to anybody about this whether it's a band or another merch manager or just somebody that's yeah otana that, that's that's a great I like idea talking about this kind of stuff and i feel as though the best thing for bands and people in the music industry is to talk about stuff be aware be in the know of yeah. everything that's going on 
and keep up to speed with other bands and people in the industry so you know when things change. Yeah, I'll link the video you here. And find out you're doing something wrong, like paying a merchandise fee that is not in your contract. But to all of the returning viewers out there, thank you for always coming back to this channel and checking out my content. If this is your first time here, I'm starting to do a lot more videos like this where I talk about current events and then kind of relate it to my experience in the music industry. Yeah, I also have great idea. talks and more industry talks and a lot of reaction videos. So if you want to keep up to speed with everything, feel free to click subscribe and hopefully I'll see you somewhere along yeah. the lines. I'm also on a ton of different social media. We've got a Discord server that I'm active on. Yeah. I stream on Twitch from time to time. So if you want to join us on stuff like that, I'll throw links in the description of this video. My handle on everything social media is at tank the tech. True. Wherever you are in the world, be safe, be kind to each other. Thank you so very much for watching. And I'll be back very soon with another industry video. Hell yeah. So yeah, guys, yeah, I just I like the video there. Tank's an awesome guy. Sub to him if you haven't already. That's that's a great video. I think that's a great way to describe it and uh, and uh, a great way to explain everything. And uh, yeah, you sign the contract, you got to deal with it. And um, it's unfortunate that that's just like a uh, that's just like a practice because right, like there's no rationale. I get it. Like if you have if there's people at the venue working, I get it. If they're not, I say fuck them. Like I don't know why that's a thing. I don't know, but uh, the thing is, like Alf Wolf, yeah, like they may not have accomplished anything in terms of that, but they brought attention to it, which now, you know, t today's day and age, man, with social media and whatnot, you could have people speak out against venues, and maybe that could be, you know, the martyr. They they're they're the martyr, you know, they're Alpha Wolf's a martyr for, uh, you know, overturning the uh, the way that merch feature connected at venues. But yeah, great great video by Tank as always. He is the man.